In this video, I'll demonstrate the split middle technique. This is a technique that's used in single case design research, primarily for charting the progress from baseline to treatment phase. The technique itself was popularized by Kasdan in his 1982 textbook, uh, but it was originally credited to White and Harding in 1980. Uh, and there's the uh, reference for that text. However, those texts are kind of uh, difficult to follow. And so I recommend for uh, illustrative purposes, these two texts, the first one by Morley, Single Case Methods in Clinical Psychology, and the second one by Riley Tillman et al. So these two down here um, are really excellent texts that show you uh, different techniques with a step-by-step -step, uh, graphic uh, portrayal. So let's go to the data. I've got a data set here. It's fake data. Uh, this particular data set is from an article uh, published in 1993, NERP catch uh, and Ottenbacher. Now, I'm not exactly sure that these are the exact numbers uh, from that paper because the diagram that they had is a little bit difficult to read uh, and didn't have, did not have uh, values on the X and Y axis. But I I, I used inferences to, to fill in the gaps, so it's good enough for our example. You can see that there's a, a, a shift from baseline to treatment, but there's also an obvious uh, trend in baseline. So the split middle technique might be useful here to help us understand or judge whether the, there is sufficient change from baseline to treatment in order for us to conclude uh, as a clinician might do, that there's a, a clinical change. Higher scores here are obviously better. And so we want to know if the scores are high enough for us to conclude that there is a difference. Now, if you just look at the uh, PND, or percentage of non-overlapping data, the PND here is going to be very high uh, because there's only one tie at the score of seven. And in the treatment phase, you have eight scores total, seven of which are above the highest value in baseline. So if you just look at the PND, uh, we would conclude that the treatment is effective. But the question remains, when you see a, um, when you see a progression like this in the baseline, when you have a trend, is this what we would expect uh, by the normal progression of, of recovery for the individual? And it looks like that it probably is. Having a, a, a trend line uh, interposed on top of the graph will help us see it better. And the split middle technique uh, is how we do this. So to do the split middle technique, step one, divide the baseline into halves. So we're just going to deal with the baseline phase at this point in time. We have eight measures in the baseline. So if we divide the baseline into two halves, we're going to take the first four and the second four and evaluate those one at a time. So we put a line in here in order to separate the two halves. And we're just going to deal with one half at a time. But we also need to further split each of the halves into quarters. And so I have now three lines dividing the baseline into four quarters. And what this does really is it turns it into quartiles along the x-axis. Of course, the x-axis is an equal interval measurement system, uh, assuming that you have eight equivalent amounts of time in between each measurement. It's measurement one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. So we can assume that those uh, intervals are equal Again, the underlying assumption there is that the amount of time in between each measurement is identical, perhaps once every day or once every week, whatever. But we're not worried with that. We're not worried about that right now. Uh, so in, in a sense, what we've done is we've chopped up the baseline phase into four quarters. And we can see where the quartiles are. So now... Step two, using the four scores in the lowest uh, half, I guess I should say the lowest quarter, 
of the baseline. Or actually, no, it would be the lowest half. The four scores and the lowest half locate the median of those scores. So we're just going to concentrate on these. And we're going to look at the median on the y-axis. So if you examine the values for these four data points, the first one has a score of 2 on the y-axis. Uh, measurement number 2 has a score of 4 on the y-axis. Uh, measurement number 3 has a score of 3 on the y-axis. And measurement number 4 has a score of 4 on the y-axis. In order to get the median, I rearrange these values in sequence. So we have a 2, 3, 4, and another 4. To get the median of these, it would be the, the median by definition is the score at which 50% falls below. If you have an equal number of values, then the median is the uh, point in between the two midmost values. So uh, 3.5 3 would be right in the center here. And so that's just, just your basic calculation of the median. Let's say you had a, a 3 and a 5. If the, if the next higher, if it was 2, 3, 5, and 5, then the median would be 4. Next, add a dot at the x and y coordinates of 2.5 and 3.5. The 2.5 is from the x-axis. That's where this line, this vertical line is. And then the 3.5, we're going to carry a line over from the y-axis to get that. So now you can see where the uh, cross is of those two lines. That's where we're going to drop down a dot, and we're going to save that dot, and that's going to be an anchor for our trend line. So there I've got a red dot on that position. And now we can move on to the top half of the baseline. So we do the same thing all over again, just considering the scores in the top half of the baseline. And those four scores are 4, 5, 6, and 7. The median of these values... And again, I've rearranged these, so they're not in order that you see them down here. There's the 5, there's the 4, there's the 6, and the 7. At any rate, uh, the median of these four numbers is 5.5. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the intersection on the xy coordinates of 6.5, which is where the line is, and 5.5 on the y-axis. So we uh, drop a line in there. And at that intersection, we're going to put down another red dot, and that's going to be the second anchor for our uh, base, uh, baseline trend line. So now uh, we clean up the chart and we uh, interpose our uh, baseline trend line, and you can see that I've carried it over into the treatment phase. So now with the, uh, with the baseline trend line in place, we can see that, in fact, the uh, treatment phase scores are doing nothing more than we would expect by the normal progression of the baseline. In fact, uh, if you calculate the PND, the percentage of non-overlapping data, using the baseline uh, trend line instead of the uppermost score of the baseline uh, phase, then uh, the PND would be uh, 0.5. So you can do this with any uh, of the various different statistics for non-overlap data. Uh, binomial test, uh, you can do that, uh, the PND, which is the easiest one. And as you can see here, there are one, two, three, four data points that are better than the uh, trend line from the baseline. And one, oops. Let me go back. Uh, one, two, three, four uh, that are not better than the baseline trend line. So therefore, uh, the PND, or percentage of non-overlapping data, would be 4 divided by 8, and that is 50%. So our conclusion there would be that there is no treatment effect. We can also visually compare the baseline trend versus the treatment phase trend. So we do the same pr uh, procedure all over again, uh, and this time we do it uh, uh, just for the treatment phase. So we split the treatment phase in half at the median, uh, and 
that is 12.5 on the x-axis. So that half of the scores fall below, half of the treatment phase, I should say, scores fall below and half fall above that uh, median. And then for each of the top half and bottom half of the treatment phase, we're going to cut those in half again. And in that way, we create quartiles. So there's one of them, and there's the other. So now, with, with the data chopped up like this, we can uh, uh, find the positions in which to put our red dots, which anchor the uh, trend line for treatment. Step two, take the lower half of the treatment phase, find the median of those four values. So we're just going to concentrate on these four right here. And the values uh, on the y-axis for these data points are 7, 8, 9, and 9. The median of that set of scores is 8.5. So we're going to place a horizontal line at 8.5. And where it crosses that first uh, quartile line, we'll drop a dot on it. So there's our dot. We do the same thing for the top half of the scores for the treatment phase. The values here are 8, 9, 10, and 10, and the median of that set of four scores is 9.5. Place a horizontal line at 9.5, and then drop a dot on that. And now we're ready to put the uh, line in place for the treatment phase. And comparing these, you know, you can really see at this point that there is no uh, increase in the angle of the lines at the treatment phase. The uh, client's scores are not getting better. It's just the normal progression of improvement. And so we can see that there really is no change from baseline, that the progression actually slowed down. The progression of improvement uh, during the treatment phase actually slows down a little bit compared to the baseline uh, trend line. And so there uh, is really no evidence of improvement here. And so that is the split middle technique. Uh, I hope you find that useful. Thanks for watching.